All right, so we're gonna load back at Yaskumi High in the morning. So this is our hurry up and run to the hospital. This is a bit annoying that we're going to have to try to, I guess we can just skip all this. So while this is all fast forwarding and we're we're thinking about this stuff, um, what what's the purpose of having a true ending in a game? Like why why would you write and work on several different endings for a game? What um, what is the what's the point of uh, of doing that? No one cares. Right, like either you're telling a story and you have an ending in mind for that story and then you end it. Daddy. Or you're trying to create a game where choice is meaningful. And if choice is meaningful, the whole rest of the game needs to teach you how to make choices in the game. And all that Persona has really taught us is that our choices don't matter. And even if you split the ending into multiple endings, you have to assume, if you care as much about the story as, as you should, Doctor. you have to assume that each individual ending, however it turns out, is as satisfying as each other ending. They might be different tonally. There might be a dark ending and a light ending. There might be a... Um, a violent ending and a peaceful ending, but if you're starting to qualify your endings in terms of good and bad, you're admitting you're making bad content on purpose. Right? Like, I think that this game could have given you options throughout to move you towards this decision as being the most relevant. But I, I really don't think, like, and you, you know, you've, I've talked about this in my playthroughs a bunch. Um, Games teach us how to play them, and you can't suddenly change how a game works partway through. Like, if this game suddenly became a shooter, narratively, that's what's happening here, right? Suddenly, there's a part of the game, and, and I think this happens, this has happened mechanically in lots of games, too, where suddenly, like in Fallout, Fallout 2, you play basically the whole game as a turn-based RPG, then suddenly there's, like, a complex, like, puzzle sequence that you have to use to get through it. And you don't have any tools for that. You, you haven't been taught how to do that in the game. Um, so it's, for me, the, the problem comes from the game not leading, to, uh, not leading to the correct resolution, resolution of the, of the mechanics you've been taught. Right? The narrative can branch, and narrative branching is fine, and it's fine to take like, weird directions, but this isn't a game. Or it's, it's a game, it's not a, a book. Right? So we have to be true to and respect the fact that the player is doing things. We're learning as we play. I... I was scared, so I... You have your life, and now you want your freedom too? Okay, so... It's your fault that not a I'm gonna skip this whole conversation. Like it's a little it's a little egregious in this because it uses the thing that matters the least in the game to try to get you towards the ending. Like I would love I would love if your ending here's here's a way that I would have done this differently. I would love if your ending assessed what social links you had at what level 
and then gave you an ending based on that, right? If there was a um, Yosuke ending, a Yukiko ending, a Kanji ending, and a Naoto ending, right? But instead, what we're getting is these decisions that haven't really affected anything in any major way suddenly affect the entire end of the game. Um, which is not, yeah, not okay. Um, so I said, wait a second here before last time. We don't have time to wait. If we don't do this now, the cops will... Blah, 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 blah. We're missing something. That's what I said before, too. Something we don't know. What don't we know? We don't know Namatame's true feelings, which I, the same as I said before. <laughs> so, okay, so the other, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing, is that, here's the other thing, is that these are not clear how or why they're different. Right? Like, why he's scared, something's bothering me, these are the same. Like, they, they're, they're mushy, right? They're not, they're not giving you a lot of information. He can still repent and I actually don't know are a bit different, but like, these two, I don't know, I, I don't like that they're so unclear. Well, what is it? Um, anyway, the, the point about building towards the ending and using the social links as a, as a guide for that isn't because the intention is that you want to play the game a bunch of times to get all of them. And you can if you want to. But the idea is that whatever the social link related ending, you know, the kanji ending, the Yosuke ending, the Yukiko or the Chie ending, like all those different endings should be as satisfying. They should be as good. None of those would be the true ending. They would all be true endings. And the point would be, you get the ending you built, right? I'm not getting an ending that I built. I'm getting an ending that the the GM of this game, that the designers wanted me to stumble into, right? I'm not getting to make a choice. My ending has nothing to do with the rest of the game, aside from unlocking some stuff that I can do later because I advanced Marie. That's only because this is an expansion on the original game, that Marie is an expansion. If you follow the expansion, you get rewarded with more content. I wish they had done that with other stuff throughout the game. I'm not saying that the game is bad because of the way this ending bit is handled. I'm just saying that I don't like it. I think it's bad design, and I think that it's a little weak, right? That it's, it's misguided, and I get why, that it's part of a... It's part of a larger culture of way games are designed. It's much less like you're building a story and much more like you're stumbling into an ending, right? This isn't about, and I, I get, I get the idea that it's an investigation game and you're like trying to figure stuff out. This choice, this is literally, I just clicked it, the dialogue tree. This choice isn't about being uh, able to understand the game. It isn't about being a good investigator. It's literally the difference between two lines of dialogue that are very similar. So we've picked the right one. I already told you there's no time to waste. Are you even getting at something here, or are you just stalling? And then I have to pick something else, right? Which I assume is we're missing something. This is the, like, I'm not ready to finish the game choice. Missing? Like what exactly? Damn it, I've heard enough of this bullshit. Give me a straight answer! Are we doing this or not? That's all I give a damn about right now. Calm down. <laughs> He's right. Let's all calm down. Keep first. in mind too that the investigation portion of the game, you have nothing to do with it. Um, the characters do all the investigating in a very linear way. There isn't really any real mystery because all you're left to do is sort of sit in the back seat and wonder where the next turn the game will take you on is, right? You're not really driving the game. Um, Persona is an incredibly linear game. You're allowed to decide which um, uh, roadside attractions that you stop on, but you don't get to decide where you go in the, the car that the game is, is driving you in. I'm perfectly calm. Also, I do like that Yosuke is the one um, advocating for murder in this case. Like, I think it's perfect. It fits his character exactly. Hey, what did you mean by we're missing something? 
What's there to miss with a sick bastard like him? Hey, let's all take a deep breath. After what happened to Nanako-chan and seeing Dojima-san, we're not thinking straight right now. <sighs> Fine. Seems that everyone has finally regained their composure. You're right. We should calm down and think rationally about this. I realize now that we've heard almost nothing from Namatame's perspective. There's no denying that this man brought great harm to Nanako-chan. But other than that point, the rest comes from our assumptions based on watching the Midnight Channel a moment ago. I won't deny that we were blinded by the heat of the moment, trying to impute all responsibility to him rashly. But... Yeah, the guy's not saying anything. Whatever reason he had, there's no doubt about the fact that he'd been throwing people inside the TV. It was him who put Senpai through that misery. How can we possibly understand someone who says killing people is the same as saving them? Failing to understand and failing to listen are rather different things. <clears throat> Truthfully, not all the hitches that were nagging at me have been answered yet. We'll have to see what he can tell us about them. Though it appears he's in no condition to do so at the Sounds moment. All right. True. Dealing with him right now might not solve all the things that are bothering us. Damn it. But you better remember this. I'll do everything I can to stop him from repeating what he's done. Anytime, anywhere, anything. See, now I'm paralyzed. Like, I can choose, but... It's like, oh, am I gonna... Is it gonna kick me out of the game? Right? Like... It, it totally changes the tenor after that's that's a thing. Like, even coming back, it affects... If the intention was to fuck it up the first time and then come back, it changes the tenor of every decision after that by teaching you a lesson, right? It's saying if you pick the wrong dialogue tree, you might fuck up the rest of your game experience. Jeez. How the hell can you stay so calm, man? Then again, that's why you're our leader. All right, let's go ahead and think this through as much as we need. If we leave any unanswered questions behind, we'll just be lying to ourselves. Yeah, that ain't gonna cut it. <sighs> Thank you. I'll think as hard as I can and try to help. We all know how you feel, Yosuke. <laughs> Come on, we've accomplished this much together, haven't we? Right, together. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. And thanks. The Seekers of Truth. Hey, you guys? What are you doing? You can't be in here. Oh, crap! We were keeping an eye on the suspect. The police officers outside seem to have their hands full helping Dojima-san. If Namatame were to escape, it would be a disaster for the police's reputation. And their trust in you, Adachi-san. Oh, I see. We'll tighten security from now on, and I'll arrange for him to be transported out as soon as possible. So, if you guys can keep quiet about being in here, 
I'd really appreciate it. How is he, Doctor? He seemed to be extremely agitated a moment ago. He seems fine for now, but he really needs his rest. Outside, everyone. Doctor's orders. Understood. We should go, too. Let's get back to Nanako-chan's room. So what's this thing we're missing, huh? To tell the truth, there's something that's bothering me, too. Why did he start killing people in the first place? Well, he said himself it was to save them, right? It's funny, because the, the group has been total ignoramuses, like, the whole time. Like, every time, anytime there's any kind of, like, hint that, that they might be on to someone, they just dive on it. It's because they're, they're teenagers, <laughs> and they're, like, they're really impulsive. So, he killed his lover in order to save her and kept going? The police speculated the first murder was related to the affair, so they called in Namatame for questioning. But everything in his testimony and his bearing, no matter what they looked at, they found nothing suspicious. If he truly is twisted enough to believe that murder is a means of saving people, I think that would have shown through. It is a little tedious. Uh, <laughs> it is a little tedious that it's like, there's a murder mystery. Here's the real murderer. Nope. Yeah, it's a different murderer. Nope, it's a different murderer. Like, it kind of, after the first time, you're like, oh, the all right. Even got a taste for killing after the first time. No, if that were the case, his motive for killing that announcer would be even more inexplicable. Namatame and his wife were separated at the time. Both Misuzu Hiragi and himself testified that she had discarded him. Hiragi also knew about Yamano beforehand, and Namatame was shocked to hear of Yamano's death. Their relationship was known, and was not strained to the point of murder. There's simply no motive in the affair angle. Okay. The police invested a great deal of effort into investigating this point. Therefore, we have no convincing motive for Namatame to kill Mayumi Yamano. Although, her name was written in Namatame's own diary. His reason for killing her... It's still possible that he was crazy to begin with, and no one realized, right? Uh... I don't really get any of this. Oh, this is so confusing! <laughs> hey, we could hear you in there. This is a hospital. Maybe you should quiet down Maybe you should bit. shut up, Adachi. Oh, there you are, all of- Oh no! Nanako's dying again! Huh? What's going on? What are you waiting for? Hurry, go! Oh, yeah, right, because we still, we still think that she's dead. Fuck Teddy. Where am I? Is this Teddy's world? This doesn't quite feel like it, though. The mist is cool looking. I remember being at the hospital. That's right, Nana-chan. I... I couldn't do anything. Why do I even exist? I couldn't keep my promise. I lost my reason to be there. That's it. I remember now. <laughs> so, it was true. Guys, Sensei! Oh my god. Nobody cares about you, Teddy. You're so annoying. Get hit by a truck. Oh, there they She's are. totally fine. She's fine. Everything's great. Okay, so she's fine, everybody's fine, she's fine. Where's Teddy? Let's call him. Okay, here we go. Couldn't save. I couldn't save. I mean, like, Namatame is, like, pretty... Seems to me pretty clearly like he's, um... 
he's he's like a failed version of us, right? Like he wants to save people, but Naomi and that girl too. I couldn't save them. Huh? Hey, what's the matter? Feeling guilty all of a sudden? Sheesh. I can't reach him. Did that stupid bear forget to charge the battery? We took a quick look around the hospital, but there's no sign of him. I wonder where he went. Oh, snow. Oh, it's snow. Hey, you're right. Wow, it's been a while since I last saw real snow. It doesn't look that pretty, though, because of this fog. I guess this makes it the first snow of the year. <sighs> it's freezing. Let's go home. Hey, Yosuke, if you find Teddy, don't forget to contact us, all right? I know, I know. Let's meet up at the special headquarters tomorrow. Man, that Ted. I hope he just went back home by himself. He's probably fine. But I'll hurry home just in case. Well, see you tomorrow. Now Teddy's kidnapped. Now everybody's kidnapped. You get a kidnapping, and you get a kidnapping. Back in Namatame's room. Was it really right to stop everyone from what they were about to do? Well, yeah, because we're still playing the game. So, For now, you have no way of knowing. Yeah, if I feel like if a, if a game gives you um, multiple endings in which some have more content and some don't, the one with the more content is always the one the designers want you to do. Always. Because it's like stuff that they've made, right? Something new in your inbox. Hey, it's Ko. I heard what happened to your little cousin. Anything I can do to help? Let me know. You know I'm there for you. We're best friends, dude. Daisuke here. It's her about Nanako-chan. How's she doing? Is there anything I can do to help you guys? Please tell me ASAP. You got the guts, man. You gotta be brave, man. Oh, from all my friends, all the social links that I made. You remember that you have friends who were there to help encourage each other. The case is still mired. See, I wish, I would love it if this came before the ending. So it was like, we're gonna review all the S links that you built. And then based on how connected to your community, based on how much of a service you did to the people around you, how many people were able to get to, uh, to 10, then uh then then that would give you like your ending for the game i mean i think when people say they want you to experience all the endings i don't think that's explicitly true because if you're playing in a vacuum where you don't know there's all these endings you might just quit um and in that case they're they're making content that you will never experience and it costs time and money and energy to make parts of a game. Um, so I guess maybe we should think of it this way. Maybe that every game has an ending and a series of game overs, a series of failures, right? Because I think that by calling something a bad ending or an okay ending and then a true ending, I think we're implying that they're all endings, but they're not. One of them is an ending and the rest are you failed. Uh, which is okay. That's an okay way to make a game. You can create failure states that encourage people because failure encourages you to, uh, to play again, right? When you die in a level in Mario, we don't say, oh, you got the bad ending. We say you, you died, you fell in a hole. So the idea of giving people um, uh, fail states I think gives you a uh, reason to continue to advance towards uh, towards the game. And it's, I mean, it's a semantic, I think it's a semantic difference, but semantics are important when you're talking about anything. But yeah, being told like you failed, because some games do that, right? Where you get the bad, the bad ending, you, you get the failure and it says, nah, see, I don't think, I don't think that the true ending is the one you're comfortable with. 
Because there's success and there's failure in, in most games. It's been quite some time. It seems you've been summoned to the Velvet Room. And actually in most games, like even like in this and in Dark Souls, even the ending isn't the ending because you get to start, you just start over again with different conditions at the narrative beginning of the game. So even the ending isn't really an ending. Seems you've been summoned to the Velvet Room. Okay, well, what do you got? Do not be alarmed. You are fast asleep in the real world. I have summoned you within Just like dreams. before. Now then, your journey has taken you quite a distance thus far. Do you believe you'll be able to successfully solve this mystery? Splendid! The precise destination of this vehicle, ah, that too is getting rather hard to judge. If we continue driving blindly, we may end up leading you further away from the mystery that you must reach. Well, why don't we take Yeah, a you know, the more I think about it, the more I think about it, the more I would have been okay with exactly how that went if they had just been like, you failed. Right? Like, if it had been like, this is as bad an ending as, like, letting someone get murdered in the Shadow World. If it had just treated it like you died, like, you made the wrong decisions. I, I guess what I don't like is implying that the bad ending and the neutral ending are still endings. Because they're not. Right? That's like saying, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go eat dinner. I'm never gonna play this game again. That's an ending. Right? It's, it's not an ending to the game. It's, it's a failure state. Because, again, I'm, I'm operating on, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say that, like, we're not arguing about whether the game designers want you, I'm, I'm saying the game designers want you to experience as much of the game as possible. That being true, any ending that doesn't experience as much of the game as possible is a failure state for the player. Right? You, you have failed to experience... Uh, the game. Now, the the flip side of that, the flip side of that is, if you want to, you can consider every failure in the game, every uh, like terminus point in the game, to be an ending as well. Every time you die in Dark Souls, you could decide not to continue. The game actually doesn't give you the choice. You just resurrect, right? You reincarnate. So Dark Souls is maybe not a good example, but in a RPG like this one, if you lose a fight, uh, you. You could just quit. That could be it. You could say, I am satisfied with this game. I'm done, right? So to the same degree, uh, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get the, the, the ending. I'm not going to finish this game if you look at it that way, right? I'm going to get as far as I can based on the choices that I've made so far. And because I didn't do all of the social links, that's it. I get the ending that I, that I got, right? Um, I don't think you can finish the game unless you do that, because I think that the designers do definitely urge you to go down a certain path. I think the problem here is, is when you assume that the designers care equally about all of the other aspects of the ending of the game, right? Like, designing Mario, again, because it's a simple on-off switch, designing Mario falling in a hole in the very first hole, you're getting hit by the very first Goomba, and then quitting the game, that's not what the designers want you to do. They want you to play again. So they give you more lives, right? They, they dump you back to the beginning. Um, I guess too, and again, we get into the idea of like cultural, it was for that cultural stuff. I want to continue the game, but I, I think it's an important point to make. There's, there's games rise up from a, a cultural space of other games. And in Japanese role-playing games, there is a culture of uh, trying really hard to max everything out or doing all these things. Uh, in this case, maxing out all the social links. And you can, but I mean, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that because you have to start doing it right away, you can't, it's not designed to be done on your first playthrough, right? I don't think that any reasonable designer, I think if you asked the people that made this game, do you expect someone to get 10 in all the social links the very first time they play without New Game Plus, they wouldn't say yes, 
Right? It's not designed that way. All right, let's let's review whatever it is that they have to say here. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. New Game Plus exists for that reason. Really getting it is totally different. I mean, really finding yourself. What's right? What you should choose to do in life? The answers to those things lie within you. I kind of like the idea that if we get to the end of the game and I didn't get all the social links, if the game tells me I died, in the same way Dark Souls would be like, you died. If it was like, there's more stuff to this game, but you need to go back and do something different to find that, that's good. Don't dress it up like an ending if it's not really the ending you want me to, uh, to get to. We are experiencing the words engraved into your memory during your journey. Failing to understand and failing to listen are rather different Hell yeah. things. All right. Go away. Let's go ahead and think this through I don't as care much about as you. we need. If we leave any unanswered questions behind, we'll just be lying to ourselves. I'll think as hard as I can and try to help. Come on. We've accomplished this much together, haven't we? Right. Together. Here are your friends. And it seems you have comrades with you as well. Those heading in the same direction through this dense fog. I think Igor might be my favorite North American voice actor. Oh no, the car stopped moving. We'll be parked for the moment while I confirm oh, our shit. current heading. As I mentioned previously, this year will signal a great change in your life. Though there isn't much time left, it can be worth your while to take the time to stop and reflect. People are like water flowing in a river. There is only one stream, but all who pass through it are affected differently. Some travel fast, some change their course, experiencing countless events as they travel down the river of time. Just so. The state of this room reflects the scenery of your heart. Perhaps this may be a time for yeah, who's driving this car? I'm gonna action. imagine it's Mara. I imagine that in the in the front seat we got Mara driving this car. You can hear something in the distance. Seems you've been sleeping till now. You hear the doorbell ringing. I like legit couldn't tell if that was my doorbell or the game. <laughs> yeah, me exactly, Mara, with a little cabbie hat on, little chauffeur's outfit. Tent's I know. Missing. I looked all over the neighborhood, but maybe I you could get anywhere. missing too. I hope so. Rise and the others are checking inside the TV to see if he's gone back to the other side. We're meeting pretty soon, so will you come with me to Juness? Where could Teddy have gone? In any case, you decide to look for him. <laughs> he's dead, USK. Just let it go. <laughs> he's been missing for a day. Just shh. It's no let use, it go. Man. We can't find him. No luck for me either. I didn't sense anything over there. The fog's so dense, it might be affecting my readings. I wish I could do better. I'm sorry. Uh, Ted. Don't tell me he really went back to his world this time. We told him over and over that he could stay here. You recall the mysterious dream you had. This may be a time for contemplation rather than action. See, I'm paranoid of every single question now. Let's think about this. I guess that's all we can do right now. He plays dumb a lot, but he's attached to us deep down. He wouldn't disappear without saying anything, right? I'm worried for Teddy myself, but let's trust in him and await his return. Right now, we must concentrate on the case. It won't be long before Namatame is transferred to another location. All right. We must hurry, or we will miss our only chance to get his perspective on this. 
You know, I've been thinking about the case since, but something just doesn't seem right. Let's quickly review the facts. Of all the victims, only two were killed. Miss Yamano the announcer, and Saki-san. From the documents we found in the car, we know Namatame had some sort of dealings with them. After that, there were multiple attempted murders in which we were targeted. It was only when he took Nanako-chan that we caught him in the act, identifying his modus operandi in the process. When I hear you put it like that, sounds like the dude's guilty. As a result of Namatame's arrest, the police admitted that Mitsuo Kubo was a mere copycat killer. Back up to yesterday. Remember when you said Namatame didn't have a motive to kill the announcer? That's what's bothering me. Right. Either he's completely nuts, or we're misunderstanding something. You lost me. She's trying to say that if Namatame is sane, then there may be facts in the case we don't know about yet. Sane or insane? Sounds like a play I saw before. The Hamlet, the Hamlet reference, or...? When he talks about saving people, what does that actually mean? I don't think there's any doubt that it includes kidnapping people and throwing them into the TV. Could he mean saving them through death? He did call himself a savior and said that the other side is a wonderful world. And I so think to be myself, saved if they die? What a bunch of crap! What a wonderful world. The bastard world. should have gone and saved himself. What do you think, Senpai? The game does a lot of like very aggressive, um, like we all agree about this. This is a thing we agree on. And I don't know if it wants me to be like, ah, you're all being a little gung-ho about this, or if I'm supposed to be like, yeah, I definitely agree. If you think about it normally, it's got to be him. <laughs> but there ain't nothing normal about that world anyways. There's something I've been wondering about for a while. When we first encountered him, he said, you're the ones I saved. Don't worry, I'll save this girl yeah. too. So, um, if he saves people by killing them, did he save no, us? No, he's just a weird, misguided Wouldn't good guy. Would he actually have failed to save us? You raise a good point. If he thinks that salvation comes only through death, his words to us make no sense. And another thing, the Namatame who appeared on the Midnight Channel said he failed to save Nanako-chan. Well, maybe he really was trying to save no the victim shit. from them inside the TV. C come on, don't get all quiet like that. You guys know I just say the first dumb thing that pops into my head. The possibility that he truly intended to save us. But he's still the one who threw in Saki-senpai in that announcer, right? Sure, we haven't nailed down his motives, but that doesn't change the fact that he killed them. Or what? You think someone else was involved? What makes you think so? Could there be something that proves the possibility? Uh, I mean, I don't know. There's lots of stuff. Morning letter. Oh yeah. Whatever happened to that thing? If Namatami's the killer, he must have been the one who wrote it, right? Let's review them. You recall the first warning letter said, "Don't rescue any more," and the second one said, "If you don't stop this time, someone close will be put in and killed." Yes, that's right. Isn't that kind of odd? Would someone who thinks he's saving people by killing them write stuff like, "Don't rescue or kill"? Yeah. And the will be put in and killed part doesn't make yep. sense either. If the killer was writing it, wouldn't it be more like, I'll put in and kill? Hey, could this mean? I'm time he didn't write it. Yeah, it's almost like someone else wrote this letter. But only the killer would write such a letter and deliver it to Dojima-san's house, right? If someone else wrote it, that could only mean... Dear God, since this is such an unusual case, I was absolutely convinced that other than the Kubo incident, there was one culprit. So Namatame really was trying to save his victims? Everything is exactly the opposite of what no it No shit. Seemed. In Namatame's parlance, failing would have been the first two cases when the victims died. If he had used his method twice and failed both times, he would hardly have continued using the TV. And yet he did. 
It all seems to suggest that someone else wrote this warning letter while observing the entire case. Someone else? Then it wasn't Namatame that killed Saki-senpai in the announcer? You don't say. We can't <laughs> say for certain yet. We urgently need to speak with Namatame face to face. Oh boy, Truth Seekers rank two. How though? After what happened yesterday, they said they're gonna tighten security. I have a plan, but there's no time to waste. Let's hurry to the yes, hospital. Yes, let's. Hey, this place is off Shut up. I'm a consultant. I'm the, the protagonist place. in a video Why game. You can't tell me what to do son. unless you're like a win. chain link fence. This is Unit 252 requesting confirmation on an ID. Name of Naoto Shirogane. Huh? Ah. Understood. Well, you're on the list. I can give you a few minutes, but I'll have to record your conversation with him for security purposes. Not that I expect you'll get anything coherent out of the guy. He's been spouting nothing but gibberish. I'd like him to accompany me as well. He has no identification, but this is an emergency situation. And he's here in Detective Dojima's stead. Use Branch on guard. Detective Dojima sent him? I... I'll vouch for his identity. Well, I guess it's better than dealing with the man himself. We have our hands full with the transport procedures, so the last thing we need is Detective Dojima running wild. Detective Adachi is busy somewhere, too. This is Unit 252. Huh? I see. Has something happened? There's something about a suspicious object out in the lobby. Ah, well then, this works out nicely. You should back up your colleagues downstairs. We'll keep watch over Namatame-san. A disturbance in a hospital lobby, after all. It sounds serious. If anything happens, hit the nurse call button. I'll leave the rest to you. Understood. Please be careful. I knew they were undermanned, but I didn't expect it to go this smoothly. <laughs> There's nothing much inside that suspicious. Yeah, just a little bomb threat. So he no won't... problem. All right. Then now's our chance to talk to Namatame. Right, get in there. If I can do it, then. The cops in this town are terrible. They are just the worst. Hey, guy. How you doing? You feeling uh, feeling okay? Namatame-san, there's something we'd like to ask you. It's tempting to think that you were the culprit behind this entire case. And to be honest, there are many in this town who hope you are. But we are here to learn the truth. So please, answer our questions. Huh? We're here to finish the job. <laughs> what should you ask him? Who did you throw in first? Dun dun dun! So he didn't even kill the first two, or even throw them in the TV. Mm. Saving, killing people? You know the answer to this is no. No. If nobody saves them... See, like, he's just, he's just one of us, and he's, why uh, he sucks at it. I put them in there. You know he didn't. I couldn't save them. Then tell me if my estimation is correct so far. After discovering the Yamano and Konishi incidents, you realized an appearance on the Midnight Channel meant certain death. Thus, to save her from that fate, you kidnapped Yukiko Amagi. You couldn't let her be killed, so you threw her into the TV, preventing the killer in this world from reaching her. And you repeated the process as more individuals <laughs> appear on the mid <laughs> Right, he's our fault. 
Because we went in and saved them. Oh my god. It all falls into wow. Place. His body is weak, but his mind is sound. Oh he's my trying god. to tell us the truth. Wow. Yeah, but if the stuff he's saying is true. There's another killer who murdered the victims. <laughs> <laughs> Indulge us in a few more questions. See, he didn't write us the letters. I didn't know. I never thought it would be that kind of place. Yeah, who did the murders? I have no idea. I want to know that too. As I thought. You... Believe I mean, me. yes. Did they find him? Did they find the one who did such cruel things? Mayumi. Please calm down. Our ability to find the culprit rests on you. We know about the other world. In fact, we're the only ones who can fully understand what you have to say. Only you? Only you. We did blame you for everything at first. But now I think we can accept whatever you got to tell us <coughs> as truth. Excuse me. <coughs> Please, tell us everything you can, calmly and slowly. You're willing to listen? Do my story? So what do you think? Like three, four more potential murderers? How many more suspects you got for me, game? Soon after my affair with Mayumi became common knowledge, I returned to my parents' home, as if to run away from the scandal. And I started drinking heavily to drown my anxieties. I hadn't been able to reach Mayumi at all, and that didn't help either. I like this guy's voice actor. I've said that a lot in this game, actually. Mayumi. Where are you? She'd been disgraced on all the afternoon shows and forced to resign from the program she was on. I caused her so much trouble. I wanted to at least apologize to her, but I couldn't even do that. I lost the will and energy to do anything. Then, one day, the rumor I heard some time ago came back to me. Since I had nothing better to do, I sat down blankly in front of the TV and watched my own reflection. And all of a sudden, there was Mayumi. Mayumi? And I was, was drunk you? as fuck. The Mayumi inside the TV looked as if she was calling to me for help. Mayumi? Mayumi! When I reached out unthinkingly to touch her, my arm disappeared into the TV, as if I had dipped it into a pool of water. I was so shocked that I lost my balance and nearly fell face first into the TV. Yeah, so he just wanted to, like, protect people after he saw what happened to the first two. I was so scared. I couldn't understand what just happened. I thought maybe I'd gone insane in the end. I decided to think of it as just a dream, and I went back to the city the next day after finishing work. The next afternoon when I got to work, I was fired on the spot, as I expected. That wasn't what broke me, though. It was Mayumi being found dead. And not just that, but it had happened in my hometown. Namatami is casting his eyes downward painfully. Yeah, his shit's all fucked up. I was dumbstruck, but later on, I remember the image of Mayumi I'd seen that night. Was it not a dream? Could it really have been an SOS from Mayumi? I hadn't touched another TV because the first time was so terrifying, but I decided to try it again. And I confirmed that none of it was a dream. So that image, was it something Mayumi showed me, calling for help? That's how I felt. 
And eventually, you learned of the Midnight Channel. I remember that when Mayumi was alive, she was chasing a rumor about some bizarre TV program. I'd heard about it before, but I thought it was just an urban legend. But then Mayumi appeared on it, and later turned up dead. The more I thought about it, the harder it became to believe that the two events were unrelated. Soon after that, I came back to Inaba to answer the police's questions. I'd lost my job, and I wanted to know the truth of Mayumi's death for myself. Then, on another rainy night, someone else appeared on the Midnight Channel. It was a girl. She looked like she was calling for help, just like Mayumi. The first thing that came into my mind was, <sighs> maybe this girl will be the next to die. And that was Saki-senpai. I'd been following all the news about Mayumi, so I noticed right away that she was the girl who found Mayumi's body. And if my hunch was right, she'd be the next victim. I didn't want her to die the way Mayumi did. So I desperately kept watching. I was consumed with the idea of rescuing her. Then, little by little, her image on the screen came into sharper focus. It became sharper? <sighs> How did you find out it was her? After I came back, my father mm. couldn't bear to see me in such low spirits and gave me a job with the family business. I met that girl when I delivered a package to the liquor store. What's up? After agonizing over it, I decided to meet her and told her to be careful. But that same night, on the TV. She looked as if she was being engulfed by some black shape. She was writhing in pain. That's why I warned her. Why won't she pick up the phone? Come on, please! The next day, they found her dead. I knew she was going to be murdered, but oh, I couldn't no. save her. I blamed myself, thinking there must have been something I could have done. There was no one who depended on me. Nobody at work. Not even my wife. Mayumi was the only one who accepted me for who I was. But she was murdered. And the same person killed another girl. I was... I was yeah, man. Myself. I couldn't it's tough knowing that these things nothing. exist. Monsters and you demons really and shit. Did love yeah, Ms. she did. That's the point. Yes. From the but then she died. Heart. Before I was married, my wife made it big in show business. I was happy for her, but it put a strain on our relationship. I think I can kind of relate. I'm also famous. It was around that time when I met Mayumi. She was interviewing our candidate for the next election. She was a big name announcer, but she only worked with local stations, and her attitude towards work was similar to mine. We both came from Inaba, so she was easy to talk to. I knew it was wrong, but I couldn't help getting intimate with her. She gave meaning to my life. Good delivery, voice guy. Soon after Saki-san was found dead, yet another girl appeared on TV. That was you. She'll be kidnapped next. And murdered. I can't let her end up like Mayumi and that other girl. This time, I'm gonna do something. My opponent was a murderer who left no clues to his identity. I thought hard about what I could do to protect her from someone like that. I'll never convince her. If she gets suspicious and they arrest me, who'll save her then? Right, yeah, so he just spent the whole beginning of the game thinking that he was alone, and he was the only one that could, like, save them. So he, like, and that's when I apparently had to try and save them. Go through the TV screen to the other side. Then, what if I put her into the TV and give her shelter there before the killer gets her? What are you trying to tell me? That it's safe over there? Is that it? The girl inside the TV seemed to smile at me again. 
And I thought, no matter what kind of place it might be, it's better than being slaughtered. Once things calmed down, I could just let her out again. If she's inside the TV, there's no way they can find her. It felt as if everything was starting to come together in my mind. Could it be that Mayumi gave me that power to prevent any more victims from meeting her fate? Was it my mission to save people? But there was a big problem. If I explained the situation to the victim, they wouldn't understand. I had already tried that and failed miserably. It seemed right. I, I, I threw them, them I threw them into the TV. Or so I thought. I threw them into the TV and then they were Mayumi, fine after and he didn't know that strength. we were the ones saving them. But then so somebody who knew okay. So I'm thinking then shut up, Yukiko, I'm talking. You thought people who appeared on the midnight channel would you be can, yeah. You kidnapped us and right, but then we went in and saved them. So that means that the person who actually did the murders probably doesn't know anything about the world of the TVs or any of that shit. He was probably just murdering people. The Midnight Channel was acting as a kind of um, profit to like let other people who watched it know. So the person who did the murders, the person who did the murders had to be someone who knew that we knew about them and were getting involved, which is pretty much just Adachi and Dojima. So. Probably not Dojima. I don't know. Maybe the game will curveball me again, but we'll see. Break. You never stopped and wondered about any of this. I thought I was the only one who could help them. I did call the police, but they didn't. And I'm basing that on the fact that we got these letters, these cease and desist letters, that were like, "Stop saving people." I knew the area well, thanks to my job. I had a large truck, and I could move around without suspicion. I thought my job as a delivery man would be the perfect cover for my mission. I thought no one else could do it. But are you telling me that I wasn't? No, it was that? us, you jackass. But if it is Adachi, what's the motive, I guess, is the thing. Maybe he's just a prude. Maybe he's just a piece of shit prude who wanted to kill them. One for getting one for being like having an affair and the other for being involved? I don't know, maybe he's just a psycho. If a person is still within the TV world when the fog appears here, they will die. Beginning with Yukiko-san, the people you thought you had been saving were, in fact, in mortal peril. Right, he's doing it so Dojima will notice him. It was my he just wants to be punished. Really saved us all. He's got a cop fetish and he just wants to get dragged into jail. I had a feeling that was it. When I went after that little girl and entered the TV myself, for the first time, I had some doubts yeah, about myself. Yeah, it's your shadow. You haven't beaten your shadow. You referred to Nanakarchan, correct? The police were after me, so I had to get away. But I still felt I needed to do everything I could to save that poor little girl. That's why I went in after her. But the TV world was completely different than I imagined. Such an abominable... Grotesque yeah, place. you kind of have to have superpowers. I knew that the three of you who I saved went back to your normal lives, so I didn't realize how terrible that world was. I never knew you couldn't even get out of that place yeah. on your own. No, that's a cowardly way to put it. I'd probably already begun to realize that it was a dangerous place. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have gone to see you all. See us? Wait. Are you talking about the concert we did at Juness? Yes. I wanted to know why the ones I saved were all hanging out with each other. And He's so I delusional. But in the end, I couldn't bring myself to say anything and ran home. <laughs> but all the doubts and anxieties I'd been unconsciously suppressing exploded out when I entered the television myself. I thought I was going insane. I probably did. And you know the rest. When I came to, I was lying in a hospital bed. You really were trying to save people. But I ended up doing just the opposite. <sighs> what a fool. His voice keeps changing. I always wanted to enter the world of politics and become useful. That's really society. weird. But after losing my job and the woman I loved, all I had left was this power. 
I convinced myself that world was some sort of sanctuary, and I secretly believed myself to be a hero. I never doubted what I saw on TV and believed everything was as I wanted it to be. I didn't think for myself at all. That's why I couldn't protect them. I'm to blame for all of this. It's cool, man. I suppose so. But the things I've done are too serious to be brushed aside like that. I have no intentions of running away from my crimes. I'm prepared to face the consequences. Kidnapping is already a serious crime. And on top of that, I put all those lives in danger. I'm sorry. The Midnight Channel and the Other World? You can hardly be blamed for failing to understand them properly. We must apologize to you as well. Had we let our emotions blind us to the truth, we would have piled all the responsibility on you. I guess from your point of view, people did It's a nice twist. I like that. That's good. People. That's actually a really solid way to like flip that around. The more you did it, the more you really believed you were preventing their deaths. I'm... Such a you're not, joke. You just kind of fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little tired. What are you all crammed in here for? My apologies. We'll be leaving. Alright then. Wait. I beg you, please find whoever's behind this. You children are the only ones who know about that world. That's the plan. I would like to go back to doing that now. Also, doing social links with each other. It's all clear now. He never yeah, no, he never committed murders. any murders. It was the magical it TV the dimension. Threw the first two victims into the TV. Plus, yeah, if it wasn't for that guy, we would never get superpowers. So in a way, there's a weird, like, hybrid relationship going on there. I mean, he didn't know it or do it on purpose, but it's a shame, because, like, if he were brave enough, he would have gone into the TV. Well, no, because he didn't have you, right? you, like me, to protect him or to, like, help him work through his shit like Yosuke did. Okay. I told you, he's almost ready to be transported. We can't have anything else happen. I better not you see rascals, you darn rascally kids. Man, he would have gotten away with it, too. Nanako-chan looks like she's in pain. She's fighting for dear life. All right, uh, we need to take a quick break because it's it's that time. So let's take a take a break here, and uh, we will come back and we'll uh, we'll play a little further. Um, but for right now, we'll see how Nanako gets by when we return and our, our weird Japanese Scooby gang. Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> 